All right, how's it going, folks? So we've been chatting about erosion lately. We're going to take a closer look at how some of the agents of erosion um, end up uh, depositing their sediments, you know, different patterns, uh, really neat stuff. Uh, I want to start out with a, a couple of clips from uh, some wind blowing sand grains on a beach. You can really see uh, the erosion in, in the works, right, in the process and how it sculpts the beach. Uh, check this out. All right, this is not CGI. That's the real, that's just real photography. Totally mesmerizing. Right, you can see those fine sand grains being transported by the wind. Check out this next one here. Really wild. Right, those fine sand grains, even the coarser ones if the wind's blowing fast enough. And again, that is not CGI. That's just, uh, you know, real filming. So pretty cool stuff. I had one last one for you. Let's see, check this one out. And this one you can actually see big old sand dunes. The rocket oh. equation, it's a beautiful thing. No astronaut. You can see that right off the sand dunes. This is in California. So it's not moving the big, big stuff, right? Wind generally doesn't, unless you're talking about, you know, a hurricane or a tornado. But overall, with, with these constant uh, winds, you can transport a lot of sediment, as you can see. So pretty cool footage there. All right, so how are uh, deposited sediments sorted out? Well, obviously gravity is always gonna try to pull them uh, downhill, okay? Uh, and you can see if it just falls, if it's not transported anywhere, then they're just kind of all mixed sizes. But once they get moving, they get sorted out by size. So we talk, we're talking about wind there, sediments are rounded, frosted, remember they get a little pitted looking, definitely not as smooth as like a river carrying them. Uh, they are well sorted, uh, and of course, a sand dune is a depositional feature from wind erosion. Uh, you can see one there. Of course, you've seen tons of the movies, I'm sure. Uh, at the beaches, you generally don't want to play in the sand dunes for a couple reasons. Uh, one is uh, you tend to get a lot of poison ivy in there. Second is uh, a lot of birds and turtles and things will lay their eggs in there, so don't mess them up. Uh, and the third, uh, they actually help prevent the beach from washing away. If there's a storm, the dunes will uh, stop the water from coming too far inland. So you don't want to mess with the dunes. There's usually a sign or like a fence around that says keep off the dunes. Uh, well, now you know why. Okay. Uh, here you have a stream going into an ocean and it's going to be going fast and then it's going to slow down. So you get what's called a horizontal sorting. There's a little Nemo there. Uh, and here comes that stream from uphill. It hits the lake or the ocean. And the first thing that comes out, you can see, are the big stuff. And then gradually it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as the speed slows down and you get further into the ocean. Well, that's horizontal sorting, right? And we talked about that with the river lab. Uh, and you go from big to small. So you could probably name these uh, sediments here. The big stuff, of course, the boulders. Coming up next, or the next size down would be cobbles. Good. Next size down, pebbles. Uh, and then, of course, you have your sand, silt, and clay. And that will determine what rocks are made. Further out there, that's going to be uh, the zone where you get evaporation of water and those precipitates, those sedimentary rocks form. But, you know, you would get your conglomerates in here your sandstone, your siltstone, and your shale, and eventually your uh, chemically derived rocks, okay? So there it is, horizontal sorting uh, happens when you get a fast-moving stream 
uh, that slows down gradually when it hits a large body of water. Okay. Um, other features uh, that form as a result of this, so you've ever heard of a delta? Uh, you'll get a delta like the Mississippi Delta. Uh, when the Mississippi River hits the Gulf of Mexico, it slows down. You get the same process, uh, and they call that a delta. All right, so there it is starting to form, and there's your official definition for a delta. Okay. There's an aerial photograph of one. You could totally see the river there, and then as it hit the ocean over time, it started to make these deposits, and literally, uh, it will start to pile up on the ocean floor there. Okay? How are deposits, uh, deposited sediments sorted out in quiet waters? Well, we alluded to this in the river lab, where when the river entered that cooler, right? The cooler represented the lake and it stopped flowing, then you started to get this uh, vertical pileup. Uh, and if it repeats year after year after year, we call that graded bedding. And remember, in the spring, the water flows faster, and by summer, it slows down. Next spring, it flows faster. By summer, it slows down. Next spring, etc. And that's why they call it graded bedding. You can see there are three different uh, depositional episodes here. Okay? Smallest at the top and of course biggest at the bottom. So this is vertical sorting, but if it happens repeatedly, it's called graded bedding. Okay, and there it is your official definition vertical sorting right happens in calm or quiet waters. All right, that's just giving you the uh, pocket knife for scale there that gives you more of an artist uh, depiction there. Okay. Then we get into glaciers. Remember, glaciers don't sort things out. We chatted about that the other day. Unsorted uh, glacial sediment called till tends to be scratched. You don't get the layering. Um, <clears throat> however, Long Island is a strange exception, right? So the North Shore, you got all those big rocky sediments, but then as the ice melted, well, then water pulled the smaller sediments downhill to the South Shore. And that's why the South Shore beaches are so nice and sandy and the North Shore beaches tend to be more rocky, okay? The erratic we spoke about at the end of um, the glacier lesson, right? This must have come from someplace else. This is usually a different type of rock than the bedrock below it, right? So more evidence it came from someplace else. But a river doesn't push stuff that big, right? And wind certainly doesn't blow stuff that big. You need a massive ice sheet, okay? Other neat glacial features, you have drumlins and kettle lakes. Drumlins we saw in the lesson the other day, that's a pile of unsorted rock. It's covered by uh, grass now, but that's unsorted rock. Kettle Lakes, right? The, you get this giant chunk of ice uh, that made a depression in the land, and then the ice melted, and the water filled in that depression. An example of that is Lake Ronkonkoma. I'll show you in a second, okay? And that's just giving you a good little idea of what's going on. So you have different lakes, you have your terminal moraines, that's those deposited uh, unsorted sediments. That's the front of the glacier that's uh, retreating or melting there. Okay, here's Lake Ronkonkoma. A lot of people don't even know about it, but it was once a giant chunk of glacial ice, and it pushed in on the earth because it was huge, and then the ice melted, and it filled it up with water. Now the hole I'm talking about, you folks, check it out. It's about 65 feet deep. That's twice as tall as, you know, as uh, our school building is. So anyways, uh, it's 243 acres, which is enormous, right? There are lots of homes around here. Um, and it's crazy deep. So about 17,000 years ago, during the Pleistocene, right, uh, Ice Age period, uh, this chunk of ice was left behind and filled in a, the hole. Okay? Uh, and then, of course, there's wave erosion. You see this at the beach all the time. Uh, and you get this uh, zigzag pattern. It's called the longshore drift. And the waves come in and go out and come in and go out, and they pull the sediment away. Um, on Long Island, uh, it's happening so that Montauk Point is getting eroded away, and they have to constantly uh, try to fight Mother Nature in that sense to prevent the beaches from getting eroded away. And they'll put out these rock walls in the ocean. I'm sure you've seen them. They're called jetties. And that will slow the water down to help deposit. But that's the net motion right there in this case. So the waves hit, go back, hit, go back. And it transports the sediments, in this case, to the east. Okay. 
Um, and here you have, uh, you know, what people try to do. So they'll put out these rock walls, which are great for fishing. You got to be careful walking on them. They tend to be slippery. But the wave coming in uh, will hit that, slow down, and then deposit sediment so that you don't get erosion. However, on the other side, it tends to steal sediment as well. So they build another rock wall, and it's kind of like this repeated uh, effort to prevent erosion. Okay? Uh, here they did it not going perpendicular to the shore, but parallel to the shore. They call it a breakwater. Same thing. Waves come in and slam that instead of the beach. Uh, so now that slows it down. You get more deposition, less erosion, and it keeps the beach from where, uh, eroding away. Okay? All right. So you had a couple summary questions there. Crank those through. Uh, we'll go through it in the meet when you're ready. See you then.